command line tools an exam review. This is it, the very last one. We're nearly done with all the things you need to know to pass that CCA exam. We're going to talk about the Citrix command line tools during this section. We're going to talk about the ones that are more important for you for the exam and also the ones that are all not so important for the exam but are useful to know to administer your Citrix environment. And then we're going to go through a real quick exam review to talk about just some thoughts about the exam. We're going to, we're going to discuss what do you really need to know how do those objectives for those exams align with what we've learned so far in all this time that we've spent together? And then lastly, what are some other study materials that you need to review and just be comfortable with before you take that exam? You're just about there. You're just about ready. So let's get through this last section and good luck. But before we get to the review, let's talk about those command line tools. I've listed here all the command line tools that are listed inside of the uh, Administrator's Guide for Citrix Presentation Server and kind of broken them out into what are the really important ones and the not so important ones. We're going to talk specifically about each of the really important ones and in generalities about the not so important ones. The first tool this one in here called Alt Adder. This tool allows you to change the alternate IP address, the external address that the Citrix server responds to, that the Citrix server provides back to the clients whenever it's existing behind a firewall. This is used whenever you're in a firewall environment or a, or a DMZ environment and you need to change that alternate IP address. To use this tool, from the command line, we do Alt-ADDR. You'll see here that for the server name, we'll need to set an alternate address, or we can set an alternate address for a particular adapter. This is used in concurrence with the web interface configuration to make sure that we've got the correct externally accessible address that the Citrix server is listening on. The next two tools are used for isolation environments, AIE Run and AIE Setup. AIE Run is used to actually run an isolation environment. It is used whenever you're using uh, scripting to, to run an already pre-created isolation environment. The AIE Setup is actually used to create an isolation environment and to install an application into that isolation environment. If we go back to our command prompt here and we type AIE Run with a slash question mark command, you'll see that we type AIE Run and then give the isolation environment name to begin that uh, isolation environment, the application inside of that isolation environment. We can use the slash W switch to wait for the application to close before continuing. Again, this is useful inside of a scripting environment. Now, we've talked about AIE Setup before, but AIE Setup with the slash question mark allows us to take an existing isolation environment and add an application into it, to install an application into that environment. And we talked about these, these parameters during the, uh, the installation nugget and discussed how to actually install applications into an installation environment using AIE Setup. Our next command is a little different than some of the other ones, and that's because although it's listed here as a command line tool, running the chfarm command will actually launch a GUI screen for you. The chfarm command is used to change the server farm membership of the server. It does this by essentially removing itself from the farm, from the data store of the old farm, and moving itself into the new data store of the new farm. It's very important if you have a resource manager summary database to update that summary database before using chfarm, or you might lose some of the data, that 24-hour thing that we were talking about before. Also, if the, the server that you're attempting to move to a new farm is the data store, don't, you, you don't necessarily want to move that server because then it could render the existing farm unstable because it's the actual data store. Note here that if you type chfarm, and I'm going to type in chfarm here, it's not going to do a command prompt like some of the other ones. It's actually going to prompt you with a GUI screen that tells you that it's going to move yourself into the new farm. If we were to click yes here, we would be prompted to give information about the new farm that we're attempting to go into. Once we've completed the chfarm, we'll need to reboot the server to complete moving it into the new farm. The CTX XML SS command, which is our next uh, command here, is probably not used very much. The only time you'd actually use the CTX XML SS uh, command is whenever you're changing the service port number for the XML service. If your XML service is on port 80 and you need to move it to a different port, you'll use this CTX XML SS command to change that port number. There's a couple other things it does also. If we bring up our command prompt again, we type in CTX XML SS and do the slash question mark on it. You'll note that using this command, we could, uh, as we said before, register the service on a different port, but we can also completely unregister the service, or we can change the keep alive time for that service. So specific to the XML service, this is what we can use from a command line to change the information about that XML service. Moving on to drive remap. 
This drive remap command can actually be particularly dangerous if you try to use it after you've installed applications onto your server. You'll never ever want to use drive remap to remap the server's drive letters after you've installed any applications because those applications may be mapped to the C drive, which is the standard system drive for a particular server. However, if you've got a brand new server that you've installed and you've just installed Citrix or even before you've installed Citrix, you may want to use this drive remap command to change the drive letter. Now, why do you want to do this? In cases where your users are used to having the locally connected drives, maybe you want to have their locally connected drive set to C instead of the server drive because that's the drive they're used to. In that case, you may want to change the server drive to, to M or N or some other drive letter to, to prevent confusion on the part of the users. In that case, this drive remap command is useful for you to change the system drive letter from C to another letter. Our next two commands, dscheck and dsmate, are both used to verify integrity of the data store on a particular server and also to perform maintenance tasks on that server. The dscheck command is sort of a sanity check, sort of like uh, DC Diag uh, for domain controllers, that just runs a series of tests on the data store to make sure that it's doing okay. You can also attempt to clean those errors and to fix any consistency errors that are found if it finds anything. dsmate is used to configure the server farm's data store. Let's take a look at those commands now. If we bring up the command prompt now and we type ds check, it will begin that process of validating the data store. You'll see here that read-only entry blah 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 is valid blah 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 and it verifies zone objects as well. You'll get this all consistency checks were successful if you have any, uh, if there are no problems with the database. If you type ds check with the clean slash clean command, that will actually clean up any errors that are, that are present inside of the data store. DS main is slightly more complicated, but it also does more. If we type in DS main, D S M A I N T, and do the slash question mark, you'll see that we have a number of different options that we can use with DS main. DS main config, for example, is used to configure the connection used by the IMA service to connect to the data store to change that uh, that DSN file name that the uh, the the Citrix server uses to connect to its database. Backup is obvious. It actually creates a backup copy of the Access database that's the farm's data store. You want to run this on the server that is the data store. Failover is used to choose a new direct server for the IMA data store operations. CompactDB is used when you're using an Access database to compact the database to make it smaller. You'll know that Access databases sometimes require compacting to make them smaller because they don't normally compact themselves. Compare and migrate are sort of used together. Migrate is used to migrate a database from one database type to another. For example, from an Oracle to a SQL server, or from an Access to a SQL server. Compare is used to actually compare the old connection to the new connection and provide any information about the comparison between those two. Publish SQL DS is used to publish the data store. This isn't used to allow for replication. Recover is used with access data stores to recover that database to a last known good state. This has also got to be used on the server when the IMA service is not running. The local host cache here can be recreated with the recreate LHC command. If you've accidentally deleted your LHC files, you can do this here. And verify LHC is used to verify the integrity of that local host cache. Remember again, the local host cache is that locally stored information that is used when the, the, the Citrix server does not have access to its data store to get information. So both of these tools are used to manage and monitor our data store. The next two tools are used to change the port numbers for the ICA protocol and also for the IMA protocol. The ICA protocol is the connection between the clients and the server. That's that TCP 1494 connection. The IMA port is used to change the connection between the Citrix the CMC, the Citrix Management Console, and the, uh, the server itself. You'll want to use these similar to the CTX XML SS command if you don't want to use the default ports for connecting to, our, to your server with, with uh, any of those particular protocols. If you don't want your clients to connect over 1494, you don't want your, uh, your CMC consoles to connect over 2513. And lastly, we have the query command. This is arguably the, the most useful command that you'll be using whenever you're just enumerating information about your existing Citrix farm. You can get information using query about server farms, about processes on those servers, about the servers themselves, and the users and ICA sessions that are presently on those systems. If we bring up the command prompt again and we type in the query command, you'll see that there are different options here for choosing what information you want to use. For example, if we want to query the processes that are currently on a server, we do query process. 
and will give us the list of existing processes on those server, on that server, and the usernames that are currently using those processes. The query user command is particularly useful because it will tell you what users are currently connected to what servers, and also what idle time and what logon time those users have. If you have users that you're concerned if they're disconnected or if their idle time is extended, or or if they're using too many processes or if their their processes are are inappropriate, you can use the query command to view information about those users and the processes they're using. Where the command gets particularly useful is when you use it against other servers. If you do query user slash server colon, you can choose a different server to query against. So if we do ctx nugget2, now we can get information about the users on ctx nugget2. The same thing with query process. So this is, can be used to get information about all the servers in our farms from the, uh, the console or from any server that's currently existing in the farm. Again, query is a particularly useful process and you'll need to know this for the exam. Let's go real quickly through the other commands, the, uh, the not so important command line tools we have here. The ACR config command is used to configure auto reconnect settings. So if you want your users to be able to auto reconnect or not, you use this command or you can do it from within the GUI. App is used whenever you're scripting to run an application execution shell. This is used whenever you're creating scripts to allow creation of those application execution cell shells. App Util is used if you don't want to use the CMC to add servers to published applications. This will allow you to add additional servers to which servers are configured for those published applications. Audit Log is used to generate logs about server logon and log off reports, particularly useful if you're trying to find out what users are getting in and out of your servers. Cl change Client is used to change the client device mapping. This particular tool can be used to change the current disk drive, the COM port, and the LPT port mapping settings for a particular client. You can also use it to flush the existing client drive mapping cache for those clients as a troubleshooting method. So that's the change client command. The CLT print command is used to set the number of client printer pipes. And what we say when we mean client printer pipes is we mean the number of simultaneous jobs that can be sent to a particular client printer at the same time. Now the default number of printer pipes is 10, but if you need to change that because you have a greater or fewer number of clients that are actually printing, you can do that with the CLT print command. The migrate to MSDE command will actually migrate the data store from a Microsoft Access database to an MSDE database if you want to use an MSDE database instead of an Access database. In that case, you'll use this command. And lastly, there's this TW, TW config command. TW config is used specifically to help you modify the display settings. Do you want 24-bit color? Do you want 256 color? What kind of colors do you want? Do you want to enable or disable particular graphics performance options for that particular session? This is used for the TW config command. Again, these are not necessarily important tools for the CCA exam, but they are important for you to know to help manage your Citrix environment. Again, for the exam, it's worth mentioning this query command. Be very comp uh, understanding about what the query command is, what it can do. This particular command may potentially be on that exam. So let's talk now about the exam review itself. We've talked about the commands, but let's talk about just some thoughts particular to that exam. And these are sort of review back from the very, very first uh, nugget when we talked about what the exam was, was going to bring to you, but it's worth bringing these up again. The exam, the CCA exam is not hard. It's really not a difficult exam, and it's not a tricky exam. There are some particularly tricky exams out there in the, the IT exam space, but this is not one of them. Understanding what the screenshots are, understanding what's in each potential configuration, both in the CMC and the ASC, the Access Suite console, Understanding what each of those configurations are and where they're located is really, really important. If you take screenshots of all the different screens available to you inside of Citrix and really memorize what those screenshots are, you're going to go a really long way to really going far with the CCA exam. Know your policies. Know what policies are. Know how to configure them. Know what to do when in different scenarios for policies, scenarios where you want to order one policy over another, you want to uh, make one policy uh, 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 particular for a particular group of P users or a particular group of systems, be fully understanding of what policies are. And also be very comfortable with both installation manager, resource manager, and load manager. You've got to really understand what these technologies are because there will be questions associated with each of these technologies on the exam. This is not just a presentation server exam. It also has to do with the components associated with pre presentation server like installation manager, resource manager, and load manager. So you'll need to know what these are in order to do well on the exam. 
Printing, 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 exceptionally important. As we showed earlier, printing is 14% of the grade on the exam. So you're going to get a lot of questions about printing. And printing is particularly difficult. So spend a lot of time studying those printing, those printing sections. Understand the networking surrounding web interface and secure gateway. You really need to know how web interface and secure gateway interrelate and also the security that is used to secure web interface and secure gateway. If you understand how that security is implemented and how web interface and secure gateway interrelate from a networking example, you'll go far with these particular uh, sections. And lastly, review the documentation. We've spent a lot of time together talking about all the different parts of Citrix, but also you'll probably want to just review the documentation so you can get a solid understanding for each of those components and what they are and what they do. And link that review of the documentation to these screenshots that you're going to take and memorize if you really want to understand what each component is and how it interrelates and how it's configured inside of the CMC and the ASC. I brought this particular slide up at the, uh, the very beginning, the very first nugget, and it talked about the CCA objectives. And it's probably worth your while to, again, review these CCA objectives and understand where you're particularly weak in any particular topic. We talked about uh, the applied and architectural concepts for presentation server, how each of the presentation server's components interrelate and what they are. We discussed the, installation, the installing and managing of Citrix presentation server, how to manage from the farm level and also from the, the server level specific to the farm settings, how to configure farm settings. If you right click at the very top of the tree, all the settings that are available to you in that farm node and what they do and what, they for, what they're for and how they're useful. At the client level, configuring how the clients connect into the server and their ICA session information. Knowing that will help you with the client questions. Configuring policies. We've, we harped on policies quite a bit, but policies are a very important component in that you need to know, again, what are policies, how are they configured, what are the uses for them, and how can you order them properly. Publishing applications and content. What are the steps to publish applications? What are the steps to publish content? Server to client redirections, so client to server redirections direction. Deploying applications. What are the things you need to know in order to properly deploy applications and also to install those applications onto the server? This is specific to Installation Manager and the, the configuration of Installation Manager. The next one is Load Manager, configuring loads in a presentation server environment. How to, how to configure loads, when you should use the default load evaluator, when you should use the advanced load evaluator, or when you should create your own load evaluators. This is very important here. It's not actually mentioned in here, but there may be resource manager questions on the, Citrix pre on the CCA exam. So, so be aware of resource manager and what it can do as well. Printing, 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 printing. There's that 14% again. Understand what printing is used for, how to configure it, how to set up the universal driver, when to set up the universal driver, and when to use printing policies. And also enabling web access and also securing the web access to published applications and content. Be aware of what web interface is, what secure gateway is, how they interrelate, and also how to secure them against external attack. We mentioned both in the first nugget and also in the beginning of this nugget that there are some additional resources available to you that you should probably take a look at. The Citrix Presentation Server Administrator's Guide, that big 400-page document, know the admin guide, or at least be aware of it, and again, where those configurations are. Understand all the load manager, the installation manager, and the resource manager admin guides, what they're used for, and how to configure them properly. Configuring web interface and the web interface admin guide, what you need to know about web interface and also secure gateway so that you can configure and secure it properly. And lastly, for the client component, this client for 32-bit Windows admin guide, that's another one you should really be aware of. All of these are available for free off the Citrix web, off of the, uh, the Citrix website, www.citrix.com. And you can download these and review these at your leisure to prepare yourself for that exam. So wow, it's been great to spend this time with you. I hope that you feel like you've learned a lot about Citrix. You feel like you're prepared for that exam. You feel like you're ready to take it and pass it on the first time. Good luck with that exam. It's, I, I really feel that together we've learned enough that you're going to do really well on the exam and be the next CCA out there. Again, thank you so much for this opportunity to, to learn with you, to work with you. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.